So in this section, we'll be discussing adherence, targets, and non-statin drugs. Now, my conflicts of interest are shown here. I work with several companies. I also work with the CADTH, Common Drug Review, and the INES in Quebec. Adherence to medication is a problem, and in the words of Ev Everett Koop, the former Surgeon General, drugs don't work in patients who don't take them. And there's been many, many studies to improve adherence, one of which, for instance, is to decrease the amount of medication provided to the patient on a daily basis. So we try to simplify treatment, in our case, in the lipid guidelines, to statin monotherapy as much as possible. But there are many other predictors of adherence shown on the left-hand corner of this slide, which must be taken into account. There are many ways to encourage adherence to the patient, and the doctor-patient relationship is paramount in making sure the patient adheres to treatment. We've had a long discussion about targets, and this stems from the 2013 American Heart Association guidelines that did not specify targets for treatment, but rather relied on high-dose statin for high-risk patient. In Canada and in Europe, we felt that maintaining a target was important, providing the general practitioner and physicians a clear message on how to treat patient. We also emphasize that a percent reduction, in our case 50%, is a very good target of therapy in many instances. Now this graph is a little bit complicated, but the a blue line shows the LDL cholesterol distribution across a wide population. The red line shows the risk of cardiovascular disease, and you can see that at extremes of cholesterol, towards the right of the slide, risk is increased, but it seems to be linear even across a broad range of LDL cholesterol level. Hence, our approach is not necessarily to simply lower cholesterol a little bit, but to encourage dramatic reduction in cholesterol with the philosophy of lower is better. Now, the LDL cholesterol remains the target of therapy. And again, there has been much discussion whether this is the right biomarker, because some patient will still have a residual risk due to a low HDL cholesterol, high triglyceride level, and in this case, the non-HDL cholesterol, or apolipoprotein B, capture the information contained in atherogenic lipoproteins, and these are considered secondary targets for therapy. What we suggest is that patients at high risk, and these are defined in the guidelines as anybody with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, high-risk hypertensive patient, and several other conditions, including a high framing M risk score, aortic, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms, chronic kidney disease, we mandate a LDL cholesterol less than 2 millimole per liter or a 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol. The secondary target is an APOB less than 0.8 grams per liter or non-HDL cholesterol less than 2.6. Now notice at the bottom of the slide there is a provision for patients in primary prevention at low risk. If they have a high LDL cholesterol above 5 millimoles per liter, we consider these patients have a high likelihood of having a genetic lipoprotein disorder and should be treated to at least a 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol level. In the middle panel, those individuals at intermediate risk, we recommend that if the LDL is above 3.5, then we mandate statin therapy again with an approach of less than 2 millimoles per liter or a 50% reduction. With respect to the non-statin drugs, and again, there was a lot of discussion, and remember that we rely on evidence-based medicine. The data for ezetimibe was published a couple of years ago in the Improve It trial, showing that ezetimibe has a small effect size but still reduces cardiovascular events, and therefore it is recommended as second-line therapy in those individuals who have not reached their LDL targets. The resins, bile acid binding resins, are an old class of drugs that we consider third-line therapy and should be used in a stat intolerant patient in those individuals who need further LDL cholesterol reduction, but these drugs have side effects and are not necessarily well tolerated. The fibrates, we do not encourage their use. There might be a small place for them in those individuals who on statin therapy still have high triglyceride, low HDL, but the level of evidence is not considered sufficient to make it a strong recommendation. Similarly, niacin was removed for a recommendation because two recent trials show that despite achieving a lower LDL cholesterol, 
a higher HDL cholesterol, there are side effects due to niacin that are deemed unacceptable. And therefore, we no longer recommend niacin for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. The PCSK9 class of drugs are monoclonal antibodies that target specifically PCSK9 and are used to lower LDL cholesterol dramatically. As monoclonal antibodies, these drugs are expensive and should be used very judiciously. We have two drugs now available on the market, evolocumab and alirocumab, and we suggest that these drugs be used for patients who have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and are not at the appropriate target despite maxi tolerated statin therapy plus or minus ezetimibe. The cardiovascular outcome on which that recommendation is based were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2012, but these are registry data. They are not clinical trials. And it shows that both drugs, alirocumab, and in this case here, evolocumab, have a very good safety profile and seem to decrease cardiovascular disease with a 50% reduction in risk. But I must point out that until we have the result of the large clinical trial that will be discussed in another setting, we should use these agents judiciously. The same data was shown for alirocumab with a roughly 50% reduction and a very powerful LDL reduction in the order of 60 to 62%. There are now plans to do large-scale outcome trials, and the outcome trials will include the hard endpoints of total mortality, cardiovascular death, acute myocardial infarction, non-fatal strokes, and of course, revascularization. We should have these data available within the next year or two. And thank you for your attention.